The difference between hitting a shot or an ability can be the difference between winning or losing a clutch and winning or losing a game. That's why becoming a mechanical god is one of the easiest ways to climb in rank. So in this video, we're going to go over a comprehensive aim guide so you can get better at hitting your shots, hitting your crits, and carrying your bad teammates. But do me a solid and smash that like, subscribe if you enjoy the content, and let's jump right into the video. Now the first thing that we need to talk about is equipment for both PC and console. Starting off with PC, remember that the goal is a smooth gameplay experience and we don't really care about graphical quality. So this means turning down most, if not all of your settings so that you can maximize FPS. Having your FPS as high as possible consistently is gonna mean the game is gonna feel smoother and more responsive whether you're trying to heal someone, Dragon Blade, or anything in between. This also means a 144 monitor or better and the consistent graphical quality to match those frames and not dip under them is something that is pretty much par for the course for every single player that is serious about climbing in overwatch in addition to that i want you to get a fps specific mouse there's a reason that mice are heavy and have a ton of buttons on them it's because they're not designed for fps they're oftentimes designed for mobas like league of legends or other games where you don't need precise aim but in a fps shooter you want a mouse that doesn't actually feel tension when you press the buttons on the mouse but at the same time also just takes your raw input into account as easily as possible meaning a lighter mouse with less buttons buttons is going to be the best case scenario for you almost 100% of the time. You also need to know how to set your DPI on your mouse and if you don't know your DPI then you have no idea what your real sensitivity is because your eDPI or real sensitivity is going to be your in-game sense multiplied by the mouse DPI. That's the only way to find it. Now cheap 144Hz monitors might be a bit expensive at like $70 but you can get a cheap FPS mouse for like 40 bucks or less. Last up is a mouse pad, and there are two pads that I would definitely recommend. Either a soft pad that allows you to really be very precise with your aim and even artificially lower your aim or reduce your aim by pushing into the soft mouse pad and applying pressure to it. The mouse pad I use is the Artisan mouse pad, which I highly recommend and a lot of pros use, but it is a bit expensive and you do have to get them shipped in from Japan, although there's some on Amazon as well. But if you prefer higher sensitivities and play tracking based characters, perhaps a hard pad is for you. Ever that, I would really suggest the SkyPad Glass Mouse Pad. It's super, super big, and it definitely is very, very low on friction. So for characters that you're tracking with, you can have a pretty seamless track over them. And it's a really good pad specifically for tracking-based characters. And in Overwatch in particular, I would probably not suggest a pad like that as much for other games like Valorant, Counter-Strike, and some of the slower attack shooters. But for specifically Overwatch, it makes sense. But it's personal preference at the end of the day, whether you you like a soft pad like the artisan or a hard pad like the sky pad now for console you got to make sure that you have a controller that has little to no stick drift if possible make sure that you get a really comfortable one a high quality one and a nice vibrant tv is going to be your best bet also if you're playing with one of the next generation consoles keep in mind that they can go up in hertz and frame rate but you need a tv that is compatible with the high refresh rate so if you're on with a super super old tv it's just not going to work and you're not going to be maxing out on the frames that you otherwise could now we did mention it but we do need to talk about sensitivity and really sensitivities are going to be a lot lower than you think it will be for most people that have never said it and the reason that i suggested two mouse pads that are gigantic is because you should be using a rather large mouse pad almost always a lot of people that i find have way too high sensitivities are using like a tiny tiny corner of their desk mouse pad and they just have their sensitivity blasted to the ceiling because they have no freaking room but the problem with that, and the best way to describe this, comes from the idea of your arm being a paintbrush, which is weird, but the whole idea behind this concept is that your arm is like a big paintbrush, your wrist is like a medium-sized paintbrush, and your fingers is like a small paintbrush, right? And the idea is that when you're painting a picture, you have different paintbrushes for different strokes, right? If you had to paint the entire picture, 
with a tiny freaking paintbrush, then it would just take forever to actually paint the whole picture, right? Or if you had to paint the minor details with a giant freaking paintbrush, it would be really, really hard and impossible. And so the idea is that you find a sensitivity that's a balance of your entire arm. You utilize your arm for the really big movements, the 180s, the movements that don't have to be pixel perfect. You're just trying to get near the target you're using your wrist for a lot of the on-screen flicking and you're using the fingers and the tips of your fingers for your micro adjusting your crosser at the last moment. The idea is that you give yourself more precise control. And the problem is if your sensitivity is too high, then you're only going to be using, you know, your fingers or maybe even a little bit of your wrist for everything. And it's really hard to kind of narrow things down when you can't be as precise because even tiny, tiny movements are going to whip your freaking crosshair around the screen. And it's hard to be focused in. And if your sensitivity is too low, then all of a sudden it's going to be hard for you to like literally move around. Like it's going to be hard for you to like do 180s at all. And that could be problematic. Now, for a dead center reference, I would say the average sensitivity, give or take, is probably about a 5,000 eDPI, which is about 1,000 DPI multiplied by a 5 in-game sense. It's probably like net middle of the pack for pro players, with very few players actually doubling that and very few players actually halving that. So it's a pretty tight spread. But keep in mind that this is not always true for every single character. Some characters actually are okay with being less accurate but want to get a benefit from 180 more so characters like ryan and mercy they don't have to be perfectly precise or more likely to have higher sensitivities than someone that really needs to focus on hitting a perfect little micro flick like a widowmaker which would actually have a lot less sensitivity than other roles on average because it doesn't matter nearly as much that you are spinning around 180 and stuff like that and you're so focused in on really hitting very very tiny tiny strokes right in that paintbrush analogy now know that that primarily applies to people on PC, but for console users, most of the time I would say that having your sensitivity on the higher end of the spectrum is going to be best for you, but there's a lot of personal preference involved for console users and specific differences for every single character. I would really suggest looking up a controller guide for your main of choice because some of the complex settings are a little bit more specific for controller players than they are for PC players, which have more broadly applicable settings. Now, the first fundamental that we got to talk about about aiming is crosshair placement, which is one of the most important concepts to nail down, but is something that a lot of people overlook. Crosshair placement is putting your crosshair relative to where enemies are likely to be, or rather their head are likely to be, automatically and keeping it there always. So the idea is making sure that you're not looking at the floor. You're putting your crosshair relative to where most heads would peak, and you're also pre-aiming certain spots that opponents are likely to peak. The reason that you do this is you got to understand that the less and less you have to flick or the less and less you have to move your crosshair, the easier and more accurate your shots will be. We don't want to put our crosshair in the middle of nowhere where if an opponent peaked us on the left or right side or some random place, we have to flick across to the freaking moon in order to hit them. The more distance you travel, Travel before you hit that shot the less and less accurate you will be while it still might be needed for you to hit some crazy flicks every once in a while some really wild flicks or some wild shots it is not something that we want to always rely on because it's not consistent we only want to have to do those in a pinch so a lot of the time we're trying to put our crosser in a place where enemies are likely to be so that we have to move and flick as little as possible to hit our shots this means that you're putting your crosser where you think the enemy tracer will recall to you're putting your crosser where enemies are likely to peek from and challenge you you're always putting your crosser head level and you're making sure that you're trying to make these shots easier on you and not harder the easier you can make the shots the more accurate and consistent you will be now real quickly i want to talk about the difference between tracking and flicking tracking is the act of actually following your target throughout the majority of their movement so as a target is in the air as a target is running in a straight line or as a target is just moving sporadically you are following them directly with your crosshair 
Now this definitely takes a lot of practice and the more sporadic the movement the harder it is to track but realize that this is a skill that you have to practice a separate style of aiming relative to flicking and flicking is the art of moving directly to the target and shooting so flicking is often a type of aim style but it's also a skill so this is a little complex where there are tracking type aimers and flicking type aimers as in there are people that prefer tracking and people that prefer flicking as an example if you are a widowmaker main and you are a tracking widowmaker main you're more likely to follow the target completely with your crosshair before deciding to take the shot while a flicking type person is just trying to put their crosshair placement relatively near them and then flick to the head at the last moment oftentimes both will have a certain amount of flicking but a flicking style of aim will not necessarily track the target the entire way only flicking to where the head will be or the head is at the moment right before they shoot i know this can get a little confusing because flicking people can track and tracking people can flick but it's just more of a preference and two different styles of aiming that both people will also incorporate I know it's a little bit complicated to understand right now, but understanding the difference isn't going to make you a better or worse aimer overnight, but it is some concepts that are going to help you as you progress as an aimer to really understand how you're taking certain shots and in what way you're taking fights and aiming overall. The last and one of the most important concepts that I got to talk about in this video is the movement versus accuracy. And you got to understand that this is true for every single character. There's a direct relationship with how much you move and how accurate you are. And the relationship is this. Moving none at all, like standing still, means you're the most accurate. And moving a lot means you're far less accurate. Like the more you crouch, the more you move left and right, these things are going to reduce your accuracy. And the thing that is a little tricky here is that not every single character will actually want to do the same thing here. Because some characters care more about accuracy and some characters care more about survivability. And there's also matchups to consider. And if this is a little confusing, don't worry, I'm gonna clear it up right now. Number one, let's think about a Widowmaker, right? Widowmaker doesn't necessarily care about dodging shots. She doesn't necessarily care about actually bobbing and weaving and staying alive. In fact, if she's taking a close range fight with the soldier 76 it is not in her best interest for that fight to go long it's in her best interest for that fight to be as short as possible because the longer it goes the less likely she is to win the fight and the reason is that even if the soldier isn't perfectly accurate he's still going to be trading damage versus if the widow isn't perfectly accurate she is not doing anything to the soldier right not being accurate enough to actually be impactful and win the fight so the reason that this matters is that in that matchup the widowmaker wants to be very still and she wants to increase her accuracy as much as humanly possible which means that she's not gonna move she's not gonna dodge she's not gonna crouch she's not gonna sway she's gonna hit her shot but in the soldier situation the opposite is true where the longer the fight goes on the more likely he is to win the fight because he is still exchanging damage and in addition just like how we talked about how widowmaker suffers from movement in fact with her precise weapon she suffers far greater than most characters from moving and missing soldier actually because he's spraying out so many bullets and he does a slow amount of damage over time doesn't get hurt nearly as bad by moving now does moving hurt your accuracy yes if you stood still as soldier you would be more accurate but it's worth the exchange because you're a lot harder to hit from that widowmaker that means that if you're in that fight you're crouching you're spamming left and right you're trying to dodge bob and weave and you're trading damage but you're not getting headshotted and you're sacrificing accuracy for movement because in that matchup, that is the way you win. Just like in the inverse, the Widowmaker is sacrificing movement for accuracy because she wants to hit the shot. And this type of concept is something that I just want you to think about here. Because it can be applied to so many matchups. And it all depends on who is going to be the one that benefits the most from moving or being accurate and you need to figure that out depending on effective range depending on the character you're up against some characters really 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 don't want to move like psychopaths but some characters can get away with doing so anyways i know that i kind of blasted you with a lot of advanced concepts in this video but this is just volume one or chapter one for my full aim guide because i'm going to be making some follow-ups to this video that really go into each and every one of these concepts but devil let me know if you have any questions smash the like subscribe and i'll see you next time